How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews with a re-review. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but I was hankering for a stout. I was hankering for a coffee stout, and I've been eyeing this beer up for quite some time. We'll get to that in a minute. We're going to do a little bit of Nickelbrook Brewing. It's their Cafe Del Bestardo 2018 edition. Uh, um, this is, so full disclosure, this is one of my favorite coffee beers, period. Uh, one of my favorite coffee beers, one of my favorite coffee stouts, one of my favorite barrel-aged coffee stouts. I was introduced to this beer uh, through the Canadian beer tubing scene uh, from hanging out with those guys, from visiting up in Canada Way. A lot of the guys up that up towards um, that air, area, you know, uh, Chad from Albino Rhino and Nick Maxwell Star and Guy and all those guys, they're big Nickel Brook fans. So that kind of got me into the beer early on. And I reviewed a, quite a bit of their beers Um but I stopped for a couple of reasons. I stopped traveling up to Canada as much, um, you know, moved around a bit, moved a bit further away. It was a little harder to get up there, even though this was available in New York State. And that brings up the two part, the pricing. Um, so if you go back and watch my Cafe Del Bistardo review, I reviewed a 2017 in 2017. And it was a 750 milliliter bottle. And it was, I want to say, less than $15 American all day. This came out the following year, the 2018 version. Um, and uh, I believe late 2018, it actually arrived in New Jersey. And I was super pumped to see it landed. Um, walked in my local bottle shop, saw it, got really giddy. Then I noticed two things. One, 500 milliliter bottle, less beer. Okay, fine. You want to give me a little less beer? Charge me that $14, $13, $14 price point. I'm okay with that. $20. So it went from $750 and $14 to a, 50, a 500 milliliter bottle and $20. So you're talking about, you know, six more dollars for the bottle and less beer. It kind of put a sour taste in my mouth. Um, so I've been staring at this bottle, and it's probably been this literal bottle on a shelf for a couple years. But I kind of wanted one today. So I said, screw it. I dropped the 20 bucks. We're going to dive into it. Now, it is in a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout on coffee beans. Two years plus on this. So it might have a little bit of waning coffee vibes on it. Um, there actually is a date, a bottling date on here. Holy shit. This is almost two years exactly to the day. It looks like 06. Uh, 06 something 2018. So it may be almost two years in the nose guaranteed almost because we're almost at the end of uh june right now um so i don't know if the coffee's gonna come off all that well but i'm kind of pumped to give it a whirl so yeah yeah every time i'd go to the bottle shop i'd pass by oh i forgot they put these little don't did they still do that oh i thought they had the little pull tabs on there um i've been staring at it staring at it staring at it and i just i wanted something i wanted a big barrel eight stout and they had a bunch of stuff at this bottle shop um, Bourbon County, uh, brewery stuff, a bunch of stuff. But I was just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm like, I want this beer. I love this beer. I'm curious to see how it ages. We'll see what's what. Now, label wise, I actually have always dug the label. The label really hasn't changed all that much, to be perfectly honest with you. It's just smaller. Um, what else do we have in here? 12% alcohol by volume. On the side here, it actually says, man, this thing's going to be fucking monster. I can smell from here. Cafe Del Bastardo is our culmination of our friendship with Detour Coffee Company and our love of barrel-aged imperial stout. An infusion of whole coffee beans into our Kentucky bourbon barrels bring a new member to our bastard family. Um, this intensely ar aromatic beer displays bright coffee, bourbon, vanilla, malty, chocolate, coffee notes, followed by warming alcohol. Uh, rec recommended to serve a chalice or tulip. And they actually break down all the parts of beer. I'm not going to get into that. Done and done. So, yeah, they were talking about the Bastard series. That's why it's called Cafe Del Bastardo. Is that you have the Bolshevik Bastard, which is their base beer. I've reviewed that. Go check it out. Then you have Kentucky Bastard, which is their bourbon barrel aged version of Bolshevik Bastard. So, if you haven't caught on yet, it's a Russian Imperial Stout. Um, the, um, the, uh, the Kentucky Bastard was one of the best barrel aged beers for your money you could possibly buy. That was like eleven ninety nine American. Actually, it was twelve dollars Canadian for seven fifty bourbon barrel aged beers, which was like at the time when I was purchasing like ten or really even a little less than ten dollars for seven fifty. It's gotten much the same price point level here. I think it's a little bit cheaper, maybe sixteen seventy dollars American. Anyway, um, yeah. So this is the coffeeed version of that. So I mean, that looks like a big, rich, sticky, 
thick stout. You know, super dark head, uh, the color like my coffee to be head, um, like you guys know what that is anyway. And just this rich, thick motor oil looking kind of beer. So, kind of pumped. Let's get a nose. Good God, that is rich. And that coffee has gone nowhere, at least aromatically. Yeah, I mean, you're getting big, huge stout in here. Big, sticky, rich, malty stoutiness with this big, nice, thick chocolate, baker's chocolate laden with a little bit of bittering malt. You're getting this big coffee punch that's non, uh, non-cold brewed. You're getting a bitterness and a richness from this huge, big, dark roasted coffee. And then you get that bourbon barrel coming into play. You're getting a bit of sweet. You're getting a bit of cherry. You're getting a little bit of heat, nothing too big. And then there's this rich kind of dollop of cream on it. And it's almost like a, a like a combination of like marshmallow, vanilla, coconut kind of floating around in all those areas. So it really does come off as a threefold beer on almost equal levels. The way that beer comes off, the way that coffee comes off, the way that barrel and spirit comes off, everything is at its uh, the appropriate level. So nothing's really overpowering one of the other kind of bits and pieces of the beer. One of the reasons why I like the beer so much, it's just kind of cool to see that it's kind of stayed that way over the years. Yeah, just huge coffee, huge stout, huge b- bourbon and barrel without a huge heat to it. Let's just dive in. Cheers. Ooh, I remember this beer. I love this beer. Big, rich, sticky, thick coffee to a head. I'm super surprised how well and how vibrant the coffee is two years later. That barrel leans heavily into a vanilla coconut marshmallow thing that makes me absolutely gaga. And the best part about it is, is it's 1000% marshmallow vanilla coconut from a barrel it's not like that oh i'm getting like sweet vanilla bean or i'm getting like toasted coconut no you know there's that there's a coconut you get from a barrel there's coconut you get from added coconut and it's easy to discern the difference between the two that's what you're getting here um there's a soft barrel char to it that i didn't really talk about it was kind of marrying well with the way that kind of bittering comes off from both the coffee and a roasted malt the beer is there it's not hidden it's not being overpowered by the coffee nor the barrel um, this is one of the better barrel-aged beers, period. I've always thought that. And I was kind of curious to revisit revisit it over, um, you know, what, three years it's been since I've had this beer. And I was like, you know, a lot has happened in three years. Uh, I've changed. My taste buds have changed. Uh, the beer has changed, obviously, not just in a format. But, you know, you're not going to be able to duplicate the same thing over and over again. And then beer as a whole has changed, you know. So many different bourbon barrel aged beers, so many different bourbon barrel aged coffee beers, so many different bourbon barrel aged coffee beers that are just kooky as fuck with all kinds of weird shit going on. So then you're like, where does this beer gonna rate? Where is it gonna fall? Because I remember it being one of my more favorite beers I've ever had, more specifically in the coffee line. None of that has changed. It is still hands down one of my favorite. It's Mount Rushmore status. We'll get to that point already. God damn, this is good. Mmm. I forgot how good it is. And here's the thing. So I was pissed at the price point, you know. And it I think that's reasonable because you're getting it for years. And I was getting it for a couple of years at that price point. So I'm getting 750s for less than 15 bucks. It was one of the best deals you could ever see in beer. I mean, it's like literally better than anything you get from Lagunitas is like the king of deals. Um, I was pissed. That's why I didn't drink it, man. This beer is worth every single penny at twenty dollars a five hundred milliliter bottle. It is. Um, so it's not so much that it's not worth that price. It is. I'm just so set being able to get it at the other price. It's a real hard hard hurdle to 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 cross to get over. I think I'm gonna get it over real quick now because this is just epically good. Just I mean the balance between all those components and they're violent components. The beer is aggressive. The barrel is aggressive. The spirit is aggressive. And that coffee is aggressive. But none of it comes off as one overpowering the other. And that's the beautiful thing about the spirit. Not only is it well made, it's well balanced. This is fucking good beer. Done and done. I don't know what else you guys want me to say. Uh, is it one of the better coffee barrel aids? St- coffee stouts. Coffee beers. Let's go to that. Let's go that basic. Is this one of the better coffee beers that I've had as of late, yeah, 
it's Mount Rushmore. It's probably the first face on the mountain. That's how much I like this beer. I would put that up there with Double Shot, OG Double Shot. I would put this up there with uh, Pesh Mortel. Um, you know, uh, I'd put this up there with some of the best um, coffee beers. And um, yeah, it, uh, history. Uh, value and availability, like I said, the price point pisses me off, but it's also worth it. So I'm not going to sit and way on that too long and leave you with if you like what we like this beer if you like coffee beers if you like barrel aged beers if you like big beers if you like aggressive beers if you like beers you'll like this beer so there you go another review in the books hopefully you guys enjoyed it down there if you want to talk about it massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff beer massive want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing and hopefully you guys enjoyed the review hopefully you're enjoying a beer as good as this one hopefully see you next time cheers <laughs>